Welcome to Digital Asset News, like the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. And I'm bringing out a bite-sized piece. Today, we have what I like to refer to as a perfect storm. And first up, you've got uh, one of the Nordic banks, Dansky. They are delving into negative interest rates. And this has actually been going on for quite some time. But the interesting thing is not that they're actually doing it, but that they're going even deeper into negative interest rates to hold people's money and the reasons for why they're actually doing that. So we'll take a look at that on top of some great information as far as a Alibaba, Alibaba, rumored to have bought 20 billion in Bitcoin. This is a rumor and why I just want to cover it quickly, just to tell everybody why uh, rumors uh, really should not be trusted, as we've seen with uh, Walmart and some other different uh, properties like Facebook, who uh, came out to be false. And then finally, we'll finish up uh, with Voyager Digital, providing a business update for April and what's going on over there, because you know, let's be honest, we got to take a look at that. So uh, we'll get into all those three stories, but first take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is uh, May 3rd. Congratulations, we're back to 2.3 trillion for a market cap. And the uh, the sentiment is uh, still a little bearish, uh, but uh, we've done a, a massive uprun. I think of why it's bearish is because of, you know, when you do that type of uh, of, of influx of uh, capital in form of a market cap, people get a little bit nervous. They're like, you know what? Uh, retracements are a little bit normal. And I think that's what uh, we could potentially see. But 2.3 trillion, hey, we'll take it. So on top of that, uh, we'll take a look at the sentiment and uh, what we're going on here. So Bitcoin's almost 58. Ethereum, the big story today. It's at uh, $3,200. And uh, every Everybody's excited. Everybody's uh, happy about that. And that's great. So if you're an Ethereum holder, fantastic. We'll see how this all works out as they transition over to Ethereum 2.0 and uh, staking. Binance coin. Uh, you know what? What's down, really? 24% for XRP, down 0.74. Everything's up. It's a good day. Uh, these are the great days. Just get to sit back and just uh, not, not do anything. And uh, really, if you want to take profits, that's up to you. This is not. Uh, this is financial opinion, not financial advice. Do whatever you want to do. And that's really what it comes down to. Let's take a look at uh, the projected range as far as sentiment. If you want to take a look at Trade the Chain, there's a link in the description. Uh, you can figure this all out and uh, find if that's something that, that's good for you. But if you're a trader, I'm not. Uh, this middle part, let me pull this up, Jesus, so you can see it. So you got 3%, uh, this middle number here, 2.95%, that was with 90% assurance is what's going to happen the next hour, up to 10%, negative, negative, negative three. So if you're a trader, look at BTU protocol, AirSwap, Gnosis, Waves, Mithril, and Civic. And I will tell you this, uh, Waves has been on quite, quite a tear, and uh, holy smokes, 32.58, <laughs> You know, we did a, a Trinity trading series and and uh, it was at 28.88 and we said it was gonna go up massively. And of course people just laughed and said, it's already gone up massively, you moron. And uh, here we are, so, um, you know, eat crow. And uh, that's what's going on. So let's take a look at what's going on today, shall we? All right. Um, before we get going, uh, just one thing I like to make mention is that uh, we did a video yesterday. It was about uh, generational wealth, and I just talked about the things that I would invest into and the five top altcoins I would hold for five to ten years, which is really a crapshoot. I mean, really nobody really knows. But I just said, here's my here's my choice: Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Theta, and Polkadot. And I gave you the reasons. And if you want to watch the video for the explanation, go ahead and check that out. Uh, some people said the uh, video was too long, so if you just want the information, well, there it is. There's the five coins, and that's it. So what's going on today? Negative interest rates uh, for the banks. This apparently has been going on for quite some time in uh, EU and banks uh, globally, but it was interesting that this came out because it makes you wonder like, uh, you know, what's going on and the reason that they give. So I'll get in that in a second. So first up, uh, Dansky Bank lowers the threshold for the charging of negative interest rates. Well, first of all, who's Dansky Bank? It's it's a Nordic bank. I mean, is it some small bank or, or big bank? It's got uh, helping countries, helping customers in 12 countries, 3.3 million personal business accounts, 2,300 corporate, 20, almost 20,000 employees and 183 branches. The core markets is Denmark, Finland, Norway, and Sweden. So, you know, pretty good population. And here's their footprint all around there and a little part over there. So uh, not a small place. And what are they doing? Well, they're charging people to put money into their bank. That's what it is. They're introducing an interest rate spread of negative 0.75 to negative 1% per annum for business customers. Small businesses will be charged the least negative rates. Congratulations, small businesses. You've got the least negative interest rates of negative 0.75 the change will take effect on 1st July. So if you're not familiar with negative interest rates in America, we don't have those yet, but we'll see. 
Um, this means that for you to store money in there and for them to, to hold it and secure it, you're going to pay them for that. And uh, it, that's just how it is. And uh, over on Twitter, I posted this and some people said, well, you know, uh, uh, that's actually pretty good because, you know, they're FDIC insured. I'm like, no, no, they're not. So like in America, you have FDIC insured and then some parts in, in Germany, I believe that they have insurance up to so much, but uh, a lot of banks in, in the European Union, they don't have uh, big, large insurances. So if you're gonna store in there, like, hey, could, could happen, maybe, you know, hopefully no one robs the place and then off you go. So um, correct me where I'm wrong here in the comments section, but as, as far as I read, uh, it's not widespread as far as like deposit insurance in banks across the, the EU and different parts of the globe. Anyhow, so this is from, I believe the bank president states, uh, we have, this is the strangest part here. We have experienced highly unusual interest rate levels for a long time now, and there is no prospect of this changing. Unusually high interest, or interest rate change levels. Great. So they're doing the, the negative. And then this is the part that's just just befuddles me. It's just, I'm confused. At the same time, we see a significantly increasing deposit surplus, which in the current interest rate environment results in a considerable expense for the banks. Let me get this straight. So the banks themselves are saying there are so many people depositing so much money. It's a huge strain on us and we can't really take it. So we got to charge you to put uh, money into our banks. And I'm thinking to myself, well, isn't that the whole point of the bank? And not only that, isn't that uh, the whole point of like fractional reserve lending where, you know, they, you give them a hundred and they lend out 98 and some people will say, no, 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 Rob, that's, that's not true. Uh, you, you put in a hundred and they lend out a hundred. So I don't know what it is in, in all these banks, but I'm like, that's the whole point. So if there's, for, there's two things. I mean, first of all, if they're really losing money that much, interesting. Uh, the second thing is, uh, if if uh, if if they have people just beating on their door like I gotta put all this money in here, and I have no other alternatives, uh, I just find it very odd that that is happening right now. I mean, there is a ton of quantitative easing or money printing. We in America just printed trillions, and that has been dumped into uh, the market. So maybe that that could be a factor. There's so much money, so much fiat paper money out there. Like, oh, I got no place to put it. I can only put it on my mattress for so much. And then just it's just a thing. But again, it doesn't make any sense because it's just zeros and ones. It's not like it's real paper. I mean, you're not getting paper money. You're just getting zeros and ones in a ledger. So I don't know. Correct me where I'm wrong in my thinking. It just doesn't make much sense to me. And uh, that, I think, is part of that perfect storm. So uh, to finish up this article, uh, just the changes to the rates. Business customers will change from point, uh, point 0.6 positive to between negative 0.75 and negative one. And uh, it states, we need to ensure that our deposit business is profitable also in the future in order to run a financially viable bank. So the thing I just keep thinking about is like, are cryptocurrencies really taking up that much effort or is there something else behind the scenes that are causing these banks to really falter? I mean, I think I, I know part of the reason we've seen a, a huge amount of uh, physical banks close their doors because they can't, uh, it, it's not a viable option for them. Everybody banks online. So with this one, like people are looking for options and people are moving in, maybe these banks are getting blockbustered like we've always talked about. Not for sure, but uh, it looks... Uh, not too great for the banks. Anyhow, let me just think in the comments section and let's move on to our next piece. This one I'm going to go over very quickly. Um, we've had rumors and rumors are just that. They're just rumors and people just speculate, right? Just like this market, everybody's speculating. So I want to bring it to everybody's attention so you don't just you know, blow your whole money on, on this one and go, oh, well, if Alibaba gets in, then it's going to go to the moon. It's just a rumor. And it's, it's unsubstantiated. So we had a rumor not too long ago that Walmart definitely bought a bunch of Bitcoin. Well, guess what? They're a publicly traded company. And when they came out with their earnings report, no Bitcoin. And then we had this nice rumor that Facebook bought up a ton of Bitcoin and everybody's excited. And guess what? Financial reports came out, publicly traded company. They didn't buy Bitcoin. So here we got Alibaba, a Chinese company, Jack Ma, the CEO, founder. And he's like, yeah, we're gonna buy 20 billion Bitcoin. Maybe they did, maybe they did. I don't know if uh, China's real big into that. I mean, they could be, maybe they want a, uh, uh, an, an economic foothold into the cryptocurrency game, but who knows? But uh, this is really it. Rumors are coming in following the announcement from the company that its 2021 Q1 earnings report will hit the market on 13th of May. So that's your, 
that's your, your bellwether. 13th of May, store that in your brain because maybe that could be a big date. Alibaba Group Holding Limited revealed that before the U.S. market reopens on the 13th of May, which is on a Thursday, it will announce its first quarter financial results, which will be unaudited. Um, and so that's just it. So 13th of May, maybe 14th of May, we could see fireworks if it really does come out that, hey, they did actually invest into Bitcoin. So, you know, hey, uh, maybe, maybe so. But so far, the big other rumors were false. Uh, so we'll see. But I thought this was funny. CNBC's Rand Nooner, <laughs> Nooner also tweeted what could be interesting as him implying that the rumors were true. USA, and this is his tweet, USA, Tesla buys 1.5 billion of Bitcoin. China, Alibaba, hold my beer. And uh, of course, you know, saying, hey, hold my beer. Let me go, let me, let me go do what, what they just did. We'll see if it's true. I don't know. And Chairman Jack Ma had branded the asset a bubble uh, in the past. But just remember that Jamie Dimon from JP Morgan, uh, he said that Bitcoin was a fraud and everything else. And they just opened it up and said, hey, 1% of your portfolio should be in cryptocurrencies. Oh, and also, we're going to help you out if you're a rich individual uh, to put you into a fund for Bitcoin. Because that's how JP Morgan rolls. And that's it. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next and last piece. Voyager. Voyager Digital. So uh, I'm a big fan. Uh, I was kind of ticked off when, uh, you know, things kind of slid down by the wayside because they had the growing pains, but that is what it is. I recommended it and I stand by it. And people were so angry because of like, Rob, you recommended it and it's just not working out too great. Well, that's true. And then I stopped recommending it and I still don't recommend it right now. I talked about that before. Let me reiterate, because there's always some comments. Do I think that Voyager is going to 30 to $75 per Voyager token uh, during this bull run at the end of the bull run? Yes. Do I still believe in the team, Steve Ehrlich, and the people behind Voyager? Yes. Do I still believe it is a viable product and will do great things? Yes, yes, and yes. So having said that, here's what's going on. For April, Voyager onboarded new users at a record rate with over 130,000 new funded accounts added to the platform. Pretty amazing because before that, they were looking at around 40 and 60,000. And then all of a sudden they had that big massive run in March. Now they have 130,000 new funded, so they doubled and they're gonna go even higher. Uh, the company plans on adding additional coins over the next 60 days. That's great, we like that. Steve Verlick, CEO and co-founder, we continue to scale our infrastructure with a 2021 goal to accommodate 10 million users. So here's the thing. So if you're still having problems, um, when all those things were going on, the growing pains, I know there was a big problem because half of all my emails were complaints about Voyager. And that's why I stopped recommending them. I'd get DMs, I would get emails, and it was just bombarding me. And I was like, you know what, my customer support. I recommended them, they're going through growing pains. I'm sorry, this happens with every single business out there. So when you have these things, I was like, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna reach out to, to, to Voyager. I'm gonna try to expedite these processes. I put them on Twitter. I've, I've tagged Steve and Invest Voyager. I've done my absolute very best and I haven't recommended them for anybody else. However, I'm gonna stop that very soon when they catch up because I get very few emails and DMs. And within the next, I wanna say two to three weeks, I'll probably go back to recommending them. I didn't recommend them right now because I want them to catch up. I don't wanna have them have me push more customers in. But right now I think they are, and there's always gonna be some people who are just unpleased with it. And they're like, you know what? I can't get my money out. I can't do this, I can't do that. It's growing pains. What can I tell you? I had to wait a good 20 some days for a transfer myself. And there's some that are still on there. Again, uh, I still believe in the, in the long term of it. And that's, that's what I got for you. So. Uh, if you don't like it and you don't want to be there, uh, just keep bombarding them and then just get out and close your account. And that's all I'll tell you. I personally will be there for the long haul. That's it. All right. I understand the comments section. And then lastly, let me finish up with this great piece of news. First of all, if you got some Cardano, uh, maybe think about staking with uh, the Dan News stake pool. Every epic, which is every five days, we give to Kiva. These are micro loans uh, for out uh, the global community to help people really uh, expand themselves. And this is for the unbanked or the underserved. And uh, we just gave, what was it? This was, I just started this uh, on Kiva. Kiva was uh, one of the founders of PayPal. They created that. 
And these microloans go to people throughout the entire globe and you can pick it all out. I just started the team, the new team today, which is the digital asset news team for, for uh, lending. The link is in the description. It's like the second or third one down there, right underneath the uh, danteacherscrypto.com. And I was just doing it individually as digital asset news. Now I created a team so we can all get together. And if you want to fund people and give to uh, people who are trying to do right in their communities, uh, especially the ones that are, are very destitute, then this is it. So my first one uh, was to, uh, this is Gilmer and farming. And uh, his whole thing, his loan helps to buy manure, hey, prune his plants and grow corn. And I always donate about, a, or, or do the micro loans about 100 ADA. Uh, per epic and that's you know, I just kind of said 125 and I donated to Kiva as well and that was the total and this is every five days Now the thing about Kiva is that they pay you back So as they pay me back I will just keep making more loans and more loans and more loans and over time I think I can I can loan out a ton of money and help out a lot of people who are trying to support their community And I want you to come with me. So uh, if you'd like to do that join up uh, the Cardano stake pool uh, with over at DNews. The link's in the description. It's like the second one underneath uh, Dan Deach's crypto. And then just so you know, when you when you uh, go to the website, there's a video that explains exactly how to do it. There's transparency. I just want you to know that this pool tool, I have two, we have two pools, DNews 1 and DNews 2. And just so you know, when you click on that, it's going to take you here. So sometimes, I just let everybody know, it's all about luck and um, for your for your staking pool, but it should even out to around five percent right now. The new stake pool, the return the, the return on ADA lifetime is four point seven nine percent. So, eh. and then monthly, eh, not so great. When you when you click down here and you click on rewards, you can see how we did for the last one. We were actually at uh, six point four five percent for for rates, but then the one before that was four point four seven, two point six. We had horrible luck in that one, fifty one percent, seventy five, and then you know one hundred thirteen percent. So. It's a complex formula. Watch the video, and uh, it it should all even out to around between four and six percent. We're averaging around five, uh, especially for D new stake pool two. The return rate a monthly is five point two six. Return rate lifetime is five point two four. If you click on rewards, you can see all the rewards that we've ever done, and uh, we were at five point zero for last month, or this month, or this last epic. Five point eight eight, four point six, four point eight, four point three, five point eight. So uh, you can check that out. And again, links in the description. Join us, try to save, <laughs> try to do a lot of great things for everybody. And then lastly, I will just say this. Um, I need to make these videos a little bit snappier, a little bit quicker, because we're moving into some of my other businesses. And one of those is that we do a uh, biannual uh, obstacle course event here uh, in El Paso. And uh, it's to help the underprivileged kids here in, uh, in, in EP, Texas. So. What I have to do is I have to go back and then create the obstacle course and get the guys to come out there and build everything and everything else. So these videos, I'm not gonna be doing two or three a day uh, for the next three, four months. Uh, that's what I'll be doing. And so I'll probably put out one a day and that's it. So just so you know, that's what's going on. Anyhow, thanks for stopping by, I appreciate it. If you like that, give it a thumbs up. Uh, that'd be awesome. Uh, consider subscribing and uh, check out the links. See you in the next one, bye.